if you're wondering why I'm drinking coffee out of a Batman mug, uh, one, it's because I have one, and why the hell not? And two, because after seeing this movie, I am convinced, not really convinced, but I am even more excited than I once was about the idea of Matt Reeves going on to take Batman. If he does, oh man, I'm just so excited. I don't want to harp on Batman because this isn't a Batman review and I don't want to talk about Batman. Batman. Um, anyway, <clears throat> this movie was fantastic. I need to hold this thing. Anyway, um, this movie is amazing. I freaking love it. Um, Matt Reeves once again proves to me. By the way, just so you know, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes are the only Planet of the Apes. Uh, not the only. Are the only movies of his that I have seen. I haven't seen any other of his movies, and I am actually after seeing his these two Planet of the Apes movies. I'm intrigued to see some more of his. So, the things that have been said multiple times is that Andy Serkis is great. I will say that in this movie, one, the apes, especially Caesar, more than, more Caesar than any other ape, but Caesar and a couple of the other apes can talk really well, and that's awesome, because I love how they've done it, because in the originals, it wasn't really done the best way. Like, they're, like, the be the best that they could come up with was a bunch of people in some cheesy costumes and talking like normal humans. In this one, you see the growth in this trilogy. Um, you see the growth from like first of all, they look like real apes, so that's a bonus, all right? With the with the motion capture CGI or whatever it is, they look like real apes. That is a big bonus, all right? Because they look more real. The CGI looks more real than the practical effects, which, as I said, I think in my first review for this trilogy, doesn't happen that often. I mean, how often do you say, oh, yeah, the special effects was more realistic than the practical effects? I mean, in the world of Star Wars and uh, Mad Max, you don't really think that, but it's true. Sometimes. Not all the time. Um, <clears throat> but... So the fact that they actually look like real apes and you see the progression of, of their vocabulary grow and grow over the movies really helps you invest yourself into the world of these apes. Um, planet of the apes. <laughs> uh, that's, so, that's a bad joke. Bad joke. But also, like, Andy Serkis' performance... Um, I just I love seeing him in motion capture roles. He's just he knows and I've seen special features like behind the scenes in other movies like Avengers Age of Ultron where he helped up Mark Ruffalo or um behind the scenes for the first and second Planet of the Apes movie in the trilogy. You know, not the originals, but this one. Um and I've seen a couple special features for uh Gollum and he this is a man who knows exactly what he's doing. He is a genius and I still don't, to this day, I don't know if, if there's a category, an Oscar, an Oscar category for uh, motion capture acting. If there isn't, there should be one, because Andy Serkis, he's good. He is a good, he's a good man. Um, and he he really impressed me in this movie. Also, yeah, well, con since, since we're talking about performance, I have to say, Woody Harrelson's performance, <laughs> oh my gosh amazing. I mean, I haven't seen him in that many roles. All I've seen him in is, like, Now You See Me um, and Hunger Games. That's all I've... That's really the most I've seen in, seen of him. Uh, but... And in those roles, he's good. You know, I, I like... He's, he's a good actor, and he has a lot of good performances behind him. But this one is the first one for me that I've seen of his uh, acting career where I'm like, holy shit, this guy... This guy is amazing. He is performing. His performance in this is don't freak out. But the Planet of the Apes is like a post-apocalyptic world, kind of like The Walking Dead. So I'm going to compare Woody Harrelson's performance, yes, to Negan. <laughs> He's a dick in this movie, and you hate him. But then you feel a little, little bit of sympathy for him by the end. Not going to say why. Uh, it could be anything. So don't assume and don't assume and say, oh, he spoiled the movie for me. Just go and watch it. But yeah, in all honesty, like when I was watching, I was thinking, 
This rivals Negan. I was think I was thinking about Negan while watching Woody Harrelson act in this movie. So it's 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 good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go into a slight spoiler territory here, okay? Because I need to I need to let this out. Um, but when fuck, <laughs> I can't believe I just fucking said that. Oh my gosh. Anyway, when this thing happens, um, it's not sad. Like you would usually expect, because when this thing happens in a lot of movies, it's usually sad. Because when this thing happens, you you expect to cry, um, and it's never re- you never look at this thing and and think, oh, that's happy. But when this thing happens at the very end of the movie, like the if you've seen it, the movie ends on this a thing happening, and you should know it. If I'm, I'm, you know what I mean, all right. But for those who don't, who haven't watched, then you obviously don't know. That's why I bleeped out the. Fuck! As I was saying like a couple of seconds ago, is that it's sad. It isn't sad, but that's a change. And what I see in like a lot of movies these days is uh, they try and be different and try and change things up, like um with storytelling and character development and stuff like that. They try and change things. And a majority of the time what ends up happening is it ends up ruining the movie because they've they've changed it so much that it kind of alienates the audience. If you know what I'm talking about, then then good good for you. But um, there, like, there is a difference between changing something, like changing a cliché. Like the cliché when this thing happens is usually... You cry. It's sad, or you f- you feel some sort of you feel sad for this thing that's happening. Um, in this, you don't. Um, you really don't feel sad uh, because it, it happens beautifully. It's a happy thing. You you don't feel you don't feel sad. You just you just look at it like yeah. That oh, I, if I say any more, I'm definitely going to spoil it. Even though I've bleeped out the other bits. You know what I mean? If you've seen the movie, just please try your best to understand what I'm saying. Usually when this thing happens, it's sad. And in this one, it's not because they've changed it up. They've made it different. And I like that. They they, they, didn't, they didn't go the cliche route of making this thing that happens sad. Which happens in so many movies. And this is, for me, the first thing that has happened in a movie that I haven't felt sad about. I was just sitting there, I was like... You know what? I, I was expecting to cry, but I didn't. And I was a little confused at the time. But then I thought about it. I was like, that's different. That's good. That's that's a good movie right there. Probably one of the best endings that I've seen in a movie in a long time. Um, But this thing that happens, I, I've never seen it in a movie before. Like the thing that happens, this thing that happens usually makes people cry. But in this one, it didn't because it wasn't meant to be sad. It was meant to be, meant to be happy. Um. Where was I going with that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's long enough for the review. Um, Look, I try my best not to spoil it, Um, but I want to talk about the Planet of the Apes more because I'm... I'm as much as I love the superhero genre with Marvel and DC, DC more, and go Wonder Woman. Um, But, I mean, I, I the, you need to have a break from the superhero stuff. You, you need to talk about something different. Planet of the Apes, that's one of it. It's not your... It's not uh, It's not a superhero movie. It's an action movie, but it's not a superhero movie. Um, and I guess that's why I like post-apocalyptic stories like The Walking Dead and uh, Planet of the Apes because, I don't know, even if it's an ape, it's putting characters that you can relate to in a in- situation that you can't relate to, right? You relate to the story by relating to the characters and how they act in the situation. Um, But, I mean, how can you not relate to a guy like Caesar? Or, at least, how can you not like a character like Caesar? I mean, he... By the way, Caesar... i got to ask, what happened to that uh, truth and justice thing that he was talking about on YouTube? Uh, Is that like a deleted scene? I really wanted to see... That was probably a spoiler. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because it has nothing to do with the story. So I won't bleep it out. Um, anyway, I, I look at season like, yeah, Matt Reeves Matt Reeves know what he's doing with Batman. He's going to be great as Batman. This movie is fantastic. Great trilogy. 
uh, when it comes to great trilogies, um, the uh, Dark Knight trilogy. I can't think of any other trilogies, but the Dark Knight trilogy and this trilogy, I would say, are pretty good trilogies. Uh, also, the original, the Star Wars original trilogy. Uh, that's one trilogy. Uh, uh, I can't think of any others, but they're all good trilogies, and I love them. And War for the, uh, like the Planet of the Apes trilogy, is up there with the best of them. Love this great way to end a trilogy. How many times can I say trilogy? Anyway, um, I think that's it. So I'll see you guys um, in my next video. I won't tell you what that is. Uh, it's another video that I'm doing with Zin, just so you know. Uh, like, we did the gag reel, now we're doing a different video. I won't tell you what it is. Keep it as a surprise. But I'm doing a video with Zin, then a video with my friend Daniel, who you guys should remember from last year. Um, and uh, then... Then I don't know what I'm doing after that. I'll come up with something. Um, uh, honestly, I'm running out of ideas. But I'll see you guys in those videos. Bye.